Hello guys, my name is Paul Křopla from blenderfreak.com and welcome to the part where we are going finally to create the graphical edges and as you can see now I can click and drag an edge I can connect it somewhere else I, I will get successfully reconnected the sockets and everything, delete edges which are not uh, valid anymore we are going to handle few cases like I'm moving all the way somewhere somewhere here to create something like an edge which will actually work we are going to update the debug functions so we can use right mouse button click as you can see on the empty space we are going to see what's in our scene we can test our socket by clicking on them with the right mouse button and see what actual values are stored inside so this will make our life much more easier and we can go ahead start coding so when I was preparing this part uh, I noticed there were quite few bugs and I don't like these print functions here to be just standing there alone as they are right now so I do want to start with uh, refactoring of the code and fixing the bugs which we will find in a way in the process so first off I'm going to print state, uh, this statement only if the debug is equal to true and then I wanna somehow be able to recognize where are we actually debugging or, or in which function so I will start using something like view and edge drag start to know that I'm actually printing out in the edge drag start function so we can go ahead here and print this out then we can go up here and print this for the edge drag end like this then we can go ahead and uh, define the debug constant this will be true yeah this is looking a little bit better and more readable and I can easily turn it off or on if I do want next thing uh, I do wanna check out what's actually inside of the scene so it would be nice to know that if I click or press some button on an object to print it out on the con in the console to know what item I actually clicked on and was it the other references or uh, connections to that object so I decided to go up to the right mouse button press method and add this logic here so we can basically write down something like item equals to self dot get item at click and pass the event and then if the debug is true then we can decide what to print out so we can basically say for example print right mouse button debug like this and print out the item So currently this is none, this is a Q graphic text item and this is Q graphic socket QDM and that's not what I'm actually do wanna see. I do wanna see more information for that, but let's start with printing out of the scene. So we can type if the item is none, then we are going to print out the whole scene hierarchy so we are going to print out the nodes and we are going to print out the edges like this and in our case I will go through all the nodes so we can type for a node in self dot gr scene dot scene dot nodes print out 
few blank spaces and uh, print out the node. In the same way I can print out the edges. So for each edge in cell grcnc edges print out the edge like this. Now when I press play then you can see we got a node object some numbers which actually represent I believe uh, the memory where they are stored and the edges are empty so this is our first bug we should be able to see two edges being written out but we don't and the reason why we are not seeing the edges is simple when we are instantiating the edge itself we are adding the graphical edge to the graphical scene but we are not actually storing the edge itself to the list in the scene so we can type self scene dot add edge and we can pass self now when I press play then you can see we do have edge 1 and edge 2 this representation is not as good as it can be and I can get easily lost inside these number uh, or letters so basically as you can see the last three differs and the start sometimes differ too so we can basically override the method which is inside of the node or any object itself and the method is called underscore underscore str and basically it's returning a string and we can return something like node and here we can write hex id self as you can see this representation is much shorter and better readable but we can go even further with that and I can divide it to two substrings and let's say start from 2 and end to 5 and then write out two dots and after that print me the last three characters and as you can see this is much more readable if these two endings would be the same uh, definitely the starting or probably the starting should be different or would be different so we can keep it for now like this and we can copy out this overridden str method to the socket so that's gonna be a socket and up to the edge and that's gonna be here edge okay yeah this one is much more readable so let's test out the socket that's a node graphic socket QDM graphic socket so this is another thing I'm going to change a little bit so here we can decide that um, if the type of the item is QDM graphics socket then I'm going to print out the item dot socket itself and we got information about the edge I believe in the socket so we can print out item dot socket dot edge so let's test it when I right, right mouse button click on the socket we got crash and we got nothing being printed out reason why that's quite simple if we go ahead to the graphic socket we are calling the socket the socket is not set so we can type self dot socket equals to socket and we can pass the socket reference in the constructor so instead of passing another one I will just use the socket here I will remove the default none and the parent 
here will be then the socket dot gr not gr socket but node dot gr node and the self here is now optional but let's go ahead to the node socket when we are constructing this QDM graphic socket it's here and we are going to pass the reference to the socket like this now when I press play and right mouse button click on the socket then you can see we got a socket B38 and it has edge C88 ok and now what if we click on the edge nothing is happening and that's not what we want let's go ahead to the view and test so if and we got a few other classes representing the edge so we can ask if is instance this object uh, item if it's instance of QDM graphics edge itself so this condition will return, uh, return true anytime it's QDM graphic edge itself or the class will be something derived from the QDM graphic edge which is exactly what we want then we can print out right mouse button debug and we can print out item dot edge so let's copy this QDM graphic edge let's import that so from node graphics edge import QDM graphic edge ok and now this should be working ok right mouse button click edge ok this is actually not useful right now so let's print out the sockets which are connected uh, with this edge itself so we can type something like connecting sockets and here we can write item dot edge dot start socket then something like a arrow line connecting item edge dot end socket like this now when I press play if I manage to click here I did so this is an edge EF0 connecting socket D68 and DD8 so let's test that D68 is having edge EF0 and this one is DD8 which are correctly being set ok so this works so we successfully managed to find and fix two bugs and we got debugging working so this will be really useful a little bit later so right now we are clear to go start implementing the graphical representation finally so we are going to print out that we are assigning starting socket 2 and print out item.socket it should be still working and we can start creating the edge the drag edge so let's call it the drag edge and this will be a new edge with the scene the reference is self.gr scene.scene the starting socket will be item.socket and socket will be none and the type will be edge type bezier so let's import these functions and classes and everything we need so from node edge import edge and then import edge type bezier ok we don't need to see these functions so let's collapse them ok now our edge should be actually created so to be sure let's print out debug view 
edge drag start and our drag edge is self dot drag edge like this okay now when I click awesome we got a new edge so our track edge is edge 9 e8 when I right click we can see we got three edges inside this inside the scene and if I manage to click on the on the track edge node or edge we can see it's 9 e8 and it's connecting c88 and nothing to the end node okay so that's c88 that works everything is fine so we can relax and enjoy that it's finally actually working but let's create the edge to be a little bit more dashed because we were talking all the time about the drag edge being a dashed one so let's create a new pen it's gonna be pen dragging this will be Q pen and we will use the default color we will use the same width so dragging set with F and uh, we can say that we want to set style and we can type Qt dash dot line dash dot dot line whatever or I will just do dash line okay and if we go down here to the paint function then we can decide if something then uh, use painter set pen self dot pen dragging otherwise else we will use the default logic for choosing the selected or non-selected edge itself so how do we know if the edge is being actually dragged it's quite simple we can ask if the edge and socket is none it should be simple enough now when I press play you can see we got a dashed line dashed edge which is awesome it's working so let's go ahead and connect it to the mouse we can go up here to the node graphic view and I believe we do not have the method called mouse move event overridden yet so let's do that and let's choose mouse move event this I'm going to rename to event I don't want to change any logic which is already being implemented there so at the end I'm going to call super dot mouse move event and I will pass the event itself and here I can check if the mode of the graphical view is mode edge drag and if it is then I can calculate the position where my mouse actually is in the scene so I can type something like a self map to scene and I can pass event dot pos okay then we can go to the drag edge and we can go directly to the graphical edge and we can set the destination and the destination will be pos dot x post.y and after setting this up we can go ahead to the graphical edge again and we can call update manually so it will repaint immediately now when I press play and I click you can see there is the dragging edge when I start moving I can drag the end of the drag edge at my mouse but it started a little bit off ok 
okay so to fix this blinking problem we basically do need to set up the position destination correctly and we can do it basically somewhere here or in the update path but the update path logic is uh, just calculating from the position destination and the source itself so maybe we can go up here to the node edge there is a function update positions which we call and if the end socket is none we are not setting the end position itself so we can add an else branch here and we can say that the self grh dot set destination will be exactly the same as the source position so let's try that now when I click you can see nothing blinked and I can drag my edge around awesome so when I click here I'm assigning the end socket so this is the ending logic we are going to implement now so this is going to be here what we are going to do is we are going to detect if it was a socket and if not then we are ending the drag edge here so we can basically say if it was not clicked on a socket then we can go ahead and call drag edge dot remove then for being sure I will set this drag edge to be none so let's test it click and I click somewhere else and the dragging edge and I right click and the edges are two if I start drag and right click I am clicking immediately on the drag edge itself so when I click on the node when I right click on the, sp on the scene you can see we got three edges here which is basically correct but they are not being set up correctly yet we can type something like print view edge drag end everything was done okay and now to the logic here so we are going to assign end socket the end socket will be item dot socket so let's test it assigning end socket to f 28 and this is still assigned to be to none so let's go ahead and type self dot drag edge dot end socket equals to item dot socket we can go ahead and assign the edge to the socket itself so self drag edge dot start socket socket dot edge or set connected edge will be self dot drag edge and the same thing will go apply for the end socket here set connected edge yeah this is correct after that we can print debug statement so edge drag end again a few spaces and re or assigned start and end socket sockets to drag edge Well, let's test that it didn't update but when I start moving it updated so we can go ahead and call self dot drag 
edge and call let's say the update positions doesn't matter this will recalculate the position of the drag edge and it will immediately turn it to the solid one okay so now we reassign the edge in this socket but the old one is being kept here so this is not what we want and for that uh, we can uh, check out the last starting socket or the previous starting socket edge we actually have or if it was if, if there was an edge or wasn't an edge so we can go back here to the drag start function and we can here we can store a few other variables which will help us later so we will store the previous edge which is going to be the item.socket.edge and we will store the last start socket we clicked so let's write last start socket equals to item.socket okay this should be enough and here just to be sure we can reassign the start socket to just to be sure this is gonna be self dot last start socket like this so this is basically reassigning start and then socket then uh, we can go up here so we can type something like debug print view edge drag end about to set socket to previous edge and the edge is gonna be self previous edge so we should test out if the self dot previous edge is not none so in this case we should self previous edge dot start socket dot edge set to self dot previous edge like this now I will print out the sockets so this is starting socket this is end socket they got still the edge E80 so now when I drag a new one to another socket it's still there but let's check out if it works so this is the new edge we have here okay so connecting sockets this is a uh, A90 and it's connecting to the 30 which is this one so that's correct so let's test this out this socket is still set that's not correct or maybe okay uh, yeah this one should be set and this one should not be set so if the, there is a previous edge we should be deleting it and the way we are going to delete it is here in the QDM graphic socket so we are assigning the end socket here then we can test out if self previous edge is not none then obviously we had an edge before so we are going to self previous edge dot remove and just to be sure it does not crash or if it crashed so we know that it crashed here we can print out that view edge drag and and previous 
edge removed. Okay, this should be enough. So now let's test it. I drag it here and previous edge was removed. When I right click, you can see we got only two edges now inside the editor. So this socket is set, that's correct. This one is not, that's correct too. And this one is set, that is correct again. So awesome. What to do next? When I click on the right side and then I'm moving to the input, these edges or the, the Bezier edge is being drawn somewhat crazy and it just doesn't work. Neither when I do it this way. It just works when I start with the output socket and I'm going to the end socket, uh, to, the, to the input one. So this is not what we want at all. So we do need to fix that. And another bug when I was dragging it from the input out to the back to the out output of another node, it didn't remove the edge itself. You can see it's still in the scene. So let's go ahead and fix the logic of creating or painting the edges. We are going to node graphic edge here. We are going to node graphic edge here to the QDM graphics edge Bezier and we are going to update this path. And what we can do, we can just simply start with deleting this one. I was fiddling with this around and I come up with this uh, with a simple solution or maybe it's not so simple, but I was actually typing something like I came up with this solution, so I will just write it down and they are then I will recommend it. So first off, this is a control point X location for the source and for the destination, which by default I set to minus distance. Then I created the control point Y location for the source to be zero and the same for the destination to be zero. I removed this addition here so I can just type plus cpx underscore source. Here I can add uh, cpy underscore s. Up here I can delete this minus distance and again write plus cpx destination and the same way is going to be here cpy underscore destination okay so I don't need to care about these three lines this will just work and it's just about setting the correct positions of the control point or control points so basically what I came up with is uh, I can check out the starting socket position. So starting socket position is equal to self dot edge. Then I'm going to ask the start socket and I'm going to ask the position here. So if the source is on the right side of the destination and in case that uh, starting socket position where I started to do drag the edge is in excuse me in right top or right bottom then I'm actually going to inverse uh, or yeah basically reverse the distance so I can multiply it by minus one 
cpxs multiplied by minus 1 and then I can probably calculate the y distance so I do need these two so from node edge is it edge or is it socket it is socket okay so the node socket let's say import everything so if it's right top or right bottom then we are going to invert this uh, x location of the control point itself so let's test it out when i'm starting from the left i'm going to the right this works now when i'm starting right and i am going back left this works awesome when i starting here on the left and i'm going here this doesn't work and it makes sense because we are never going to connect one input to input of another node so in this case i'm not going to handle with this uh, particular problems here but if you if you have a look and i start on the right position and i'm dragging the edge to the input you can see we got our edge being curved and it's leading outside of the node always so now when I tie this one and I go up here this one is not working this one is not working yet because there is another condition we need to we need to take care of and this condition is basically the opposite of this one almost so we can go ahead and say or if source x position is less than destination x position and starting socket position is in left bottom or left top then we are going to inverse these two again so I will go from input to the output in this way this works and if I go back here you can see this again works which is awesome but I don't like or I didn't like this uh, steep lines here or the curves I wanted to be uh, move the control points a little bit further away so it's a little bit more curved and the easiest solution I came up with is uh, by creating a new something like edge control point roundness constant or variable so edge cp roundness and by default let's say this is gonna be uh, let's say 100 20 is not enough and here in our case when we are switching the control point positions we can go ahead and say cpi uh, cpy uh, underscore destination will equal to parenthesis s1 minus v1 divide by math absolute position uh, or absolute value so for that I need to import math of s1 minus d1 but there is one big problem with this uh, when the source y position and destination y position will be equal then it's gonna be zero and in this case we are going to divide by zero so to fix this issue 
we can type if and we can paste uh, the same expression here so if this expression is not equal to zero then the absolute value will be this one and if it is actually zero then we will pass 0, 0.00 something one so we don't divide by zero then we can end up the math absolute function and we should be good to go but we are not because this is going to be here if let me divide it a little bit so this is going to be this divided by math absolute value is gonna be here and this is s1 minus d1 if actually this is not zero otherwise it's gonna be 0 0.001 okay and all of this we will multiply by the edge cp roundness so let's test this and as you can see the destination is not being flat as flat as the source and when I switch it gets a little bit more rounded like this okay so basically this works so let me copy that because the same logic is going to happen for the cpy underscore s the only exception is that order of this d and s is gonna be the opposite I believe okay so let's test that and yeah that's something we can work with I guess yeah it goes a little bit strange-ish but uh, at least it's being connected to the correct sockets itself you can go ahead and create uh, your own algorithm of detecting the position of the control points but I think this works enough and I would say that, uh, that again if we connect the input with another input it's not being rounded off because in the reality we actually are not going to connect the input with an input you probably should always connect an output with an input so you can connect it to itself like this which doesn't make any sense for the for any of three I can think of but still you can do that because it's output with input we are not going to handle the case where are you connecting two outputs or two inputs together so last thing we wanted to fix is setting up the destination where there was a pre previous edge in the destination it's not being deleted and it should be deleted so let's go ahead and fix that so let's print out another debug edge track end and this time I 
do wanna check out the previous edge. So let's print self previous edge. Okay. So when I do this, the previous edge is none. Okay, and uh, assign and socket previous edge removed. It was none. That works. But I'm assigning end socket, so probably I should have a look inside of the item socket if it has an edge and in that case I should remove the edge which was there so if item dot socket dot has edge then uh, you can go ahead and type item dot socket dot edge dot remove let's try that and we should have only two edges right now yeah this works so when I drag it from the right side this works okay from the left side it works again this should be none none okay it has none edge this should have an edge and this shouldn't have an edge too socket has the same edge awesome so now we i guess we successfully created a graphical representation of the socket with edges which is awesome we can move them around as crazy we will have some edges, graphical edges which are actually connected. When I cancel that, we still do have three edges, so this works. And our socket has the edge being connected still as it should. Okay, so I think this will be it for this part. Awesome! So thanks for watching and see you at the next part.